Hey all, it's Dolls House Dilemma here. Um, I said I'd get straight into things, so let's do that. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to put some mirrors down in the hall and the stairs. So I've been waiting to do this for a while. Excited to do it, to be honest. It like, feels like a finishing touch. So I've just put some double-sided tape here, here and here. It's not a difficult thing to do, but it's probably going to be quite difficult to catch on camera because it's such a small space. But we'll give it a go anyway. So I'm just peeling the... I'll start at the back, I think. Try and see if I can peel the top tape off. Of course, this is proper double-sided tape for carpets. I think I'm going to have to get my tweezers. Right, I took all the backing tape off. Right. So now the tricky bit. Yeah, I think that's all right. Well, I've got to say, I'm really glad I've done the stairs before any of the other rooms because I think it's probably one of the hardest areas to work in. As you can see, the tape's down there already. I don't know what this is going to come off like. I'm just going to, in fact, I'm just burnishing this on. You can't see yet, but you will in a minute. Because <laughs> I'm just on the stairs that's below vision. There you go. Well, while I'm doing this, I'd just like to say thank you so much for all the lovely comments I've had since I started this channel. You all are really lovely people. And I read everyone and I do answer everyone too. But I'm just so appreciative. You're so you're so generous in your in your comments. Right. Let's get this carpet down. I did show you the fabric before, but I'll, I'll show you here. It's a beautiful vintage fabric. And I've just taken some of the threads. I mean, it's very thick, very thick fabric. It is almost like carpet to feel. Um, I've just taken the threads and just frayed the edges a bit. Right, let's see if we can get the sticky paper off. I think that's going to be a trial, but we'll give it a go. And the other thing I'd like to say, last Friday, it was my sister's birthday. And I did wish a happy birthday, but then I went and edited it out. <laughs> I obviously have to shorten everything a lot to make sure the videos aren't too long. So I just want to say, happy birthday for last Friday, my dear. Love you millions. Right, I think I've managed to get you in a position that's possibly workable. So this stuff is super super sticky trying not to get the fabric so it all waves it's like impossible can't decide if that's going ski whip or not right Two minutes I'll get a light. Right, I've put my light at the top so you can see. And they're not massively out. I think that does look very nice. What I've decided to do, because it's a bit raggedy at the bottom, is I've got a little piece of wood and that. Come on, focus. Right, as you can see, I've got my phone light in there, trying to help out the lighting situation. There's just not a lot of room for all three of us. I think it's 
going off key a little bit, but I must admit this is something I've never done before. I've never put a runner on stairs. I'm sorry if I keep banging this, it's, it's actually impossible not to. It's going off a little bit again. difficult but I've been waiting for this for so long. It does actually look really nice. What I've found is if it starts going ski with press the opposite side first and it kind of pulls it over a bit. a slightly different colour but I loved it so much I decided to keep it I could have redone it but I just thought oh I really like that it, it actually looks more like wood and uh, that's a technique I'll be coming back to with you because I think that we can find some applications for it and that then neatens that bottom off well I'm really pleased with that I've just got <laughs> Where's my phone? I've just got that little bit there. You can see the tape to do across there. So we'll finish that off. Well, that's it. We're in. Two seconds. There. Tell you what, I'm pleased that job's out of the way for something that I thought was going to be very simple. It is, but it's fiddly. And I must say thank you to my friend who gave me that fabric. Much appreciated. Right, back again. I'm still on with the haul, obviously. So I've just done these little light shades, and I actually think they're really cute. I mean, obviously, you can't hide the complete light fitting. But I really like them. So what I made them out of was, well, I'll take you over to my desk and show you. But I've still got this one to do. Now this one needs screwing in properly, but I will get that done. But the next one for there, because it's higher up, I'm thinking of hanging a few beads on it as well. So we'll go over to my workplace and we'll sort that out. As you can see, I have a selection of beads. Uh, that's probably about all I've got in my stash, I think, other than big, bigger beads. This is, I know, this is, I think it's called tatting. It's not something I've ever done, but it is delicate. So that's what was around the other shades. Obviously, it was a little doily. Um, so I'm just snipping one of those off. Well, we'll, we'll do it together. Oh, that's me just sitting down in the seat. <laughs> right, let's pick a nice one. They are only 12 volts, so they don't give off a lot of heat. I mean, a little bit. Okay, I've got some a few bugle-type beads there. I could put my hands on a few more if I have to. I've got these. Um, I've got some pink ones there, so I'm using some uh, embroidery thread because it's fine. Okay, right, I had to fathom that out in my head. Um, I've come up with a combination that I quite like. I think that look is probably going to look all right. And I'll start off doing one on each of them and then see how that looks. And if it doesn't look enough, I'll probably put one in between. But I honestly don't think it'll need any more than that. It's 
So we've got a red bugle. Come on. One of them. I'm just stabbing around in there to one goes on my needle. One of them. Ooh, three together. Another one of them. Clear. As you can see, I have glue and cuts on my fingers. That was a Stanley knife. <laughs> oh, now that one doesn't want to go through. So I'll put him aside. It's amazing how some of them vary in size. Not only length, but like in, obviously, diameter. No, that one won't go through either. Oh, come on. Nope. So those two in there go. Oh, come on. You're telling me the one I picked before is just like special. <laughs> it's good to be, isn't it? It's just like a special one that will go through and then none of the others will. So then I have to change my whole design. That won't even go that far on my needle. Uh, what you need is actually a really super fine needle. I did wonder whether this one was small enough. That looks like a good one. Come on. So anyway, I still hope you're all enjoying... It will go. It's a bit tough, that one. The thing is, I've got to go back through it, which makes it really hard. Um, that, yeah, I was just going to say, I really hope you're still enjoying my channel. From the comments that I do get from some people you seem to be. And like I say, if you can like, subscribe and ring that bell, it helps the channel grow, which, all in all, is a good thing. Right, so what have I got then? All right, just one more gold one, I think. Oh no, yes. I've got the bead between, so they should be the same. They're going to split the bead. It's not going to go, you know. Oop. That was a bit of gloss come off there, look. Oh, no, those two will go. All right, let's see. Are you going to go or are you going to break? It's not going to go. Hopefully not. See, that one's not hanging right like that one. I have to pull it a bit tighter, I think. Yeah, so then we have three. Oh, ever so slightly different. One's got a kink in. <laughs> that is totally irritating me. Right, that's that sorted it. Why are you kinking? Come on, don't kink. Uh. Oh dear, one little. <laughs> Woo. Me and beads, unlike um, 
some other YouTubers who you probably all watch do not get on. They love them. I love them. I just don't like working with them. Right. I'll get back to you when I've done some more. <laughs> okay, as usual. I've discovered I've been making life very complicated for myself. All these are tied on by hand, several little knots. And then I decided, <clears throat> excuse me, I decided to put these on. Because in between, now this is getting quite weighty. I just hope it isn't going to be too weighty. So I'll show you how I finish those off. And I've started putting a knot in at the beginning and just using that. just to get me going. This is one of the other things that keeps happening. All the bees keep getting caught up in the uh, cotton. Right. So that's nice and tight now. I just cut that knot off. I'll do that now. I'll leave it. I could actually cut more than that off. Right, so then I need Oops, let me see, I've forgotten what I had on there. <laughs> right, it's one of those long ones. Which is still proving quite difficult to get on and off needles. It's a simple little thing, but I've forgotten what it is. Right, just one of those. These are crystals. These are actually uh, Shvagoski. I can never say that word. Fash mm, anyway, Shvagoski. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I've still got a cough. But yeah, I know what I mean. And then another one of the little O's. And then no more struggling around tying it by hand. You just, like, where are you there? Right, you just go in from the back of the little bead. And then if it will allow, my last one did. Oh, yeah, I went back through it. I think, did I? Sure I did. Yeah, I just went back through it to make sure it was secure. And then... Cut it off. Right, so there, they're all on, all in place. And then just, sorry, so I'm just snipping those, this middle circle out. Obviously, you'd have to find something similar, or maybe you can do tatting or crochet. I'm sure I can't crochet. And I'm not a good knitter either. I'm not very good at knitting, and I'm definitely not very good at crocheting. I can do a tiny bit, but not much. So anyway, that's like that, which then gives you those loops left, which is perfect. 
I mean, I couldn't believe my look when I did this and I thought, wow. And then the elastic. I just used my finger as a guide and not it. And then that hopefully will make a little shade. So I'm going to leave it quite long because obviously. I'm not 100% sure of the size yet. So, ta ta for now. I'll show you in a bit. Well. Wow. That's even surprised me how absolutely gorgeous that looks. And Beth, she is just in disbelief. And look at the lovely shadows it casts. So after seeing how lovely that looks, I think I'm going to have to add some bees to these two down here because it really does make a massive difference and it looks, it just looks so lovely. So anyway, more work involved, but hey ho. Happy Halloween! It was All Hallows' Eve. Halloween, the veil between the living and the dead was at its thinnest. The mist was rolling in from the hills, but the fires burnt warm and bright at Follybeck Farm. After much fun apple bobbing and carving some turnips with Charlotte, it was time for bed. Come on, Charlotte, let's get some apples. Tobias, it's meant to be for Charlotte. I'll give it a go. Take that. <laughs> Snout, stop playing with your food. Come on then, Beth, take Charlotte up them wooden hills to bed. On her return, they sat by the fire which lit the whole room with an amber glow. Tobias and Beth thought how blessed they were to have a roof over their head and the love of their little family and, of course, Snout. They remembered their loved ones which had passed. Not all of them with the fondest of memories, but that's a story for another time. And how they had recently discovered that parts of Follybeck Farm dated back to Tudor times, which was confirmed by the finding of an old picture wrapped up in a cloth in one of the old cow buyers. Come on then, Beth. Let's get this barn cleared for the animals for the winter. Oh, heavy work. I'll go make a cuppa. I'll take that one. Go on, Snow. Give me a hand. What's in here then? This looks fairly heavy. Wonder what's in there. Let's have a look. My, that looks like an old picture. Let's take it in for the frame Beth's got. Let's go. Now, proudly hanging above the huge old sly fox that Tobias had shot, the bullet passing straight through and killing a poor pheasant, but at least, as Tobias' mishaps go, this was a good one. Just imagine what could have happened. But little did they know the, un the untimely death of the beautiful lady in the portrait was one they would soon discover. Come on then, Beth, up them wooden hills. Let's go have a cuddle. Got a lot to do tomorrow. The grandfather clock struck midnight. They had both become accustomed to the tick-tock and the hourly chimes of this majestic timepiece. Tobias was fast asleep, then suddenly awake. It felt like someone was staring at him. He rubbed his eyes to become accustomed to the dark. Did I just see a glowing light, he thought. He quickly jumped out of bed. Beth did not stir at all, since the last few days had taken its toll. As Tobias got onto the hallway landing, he couldn't believe his eyes. The orb was now a ghost. All the hairs on the back of his neck stood on end. For a moment, his legs stiffened and he could not move. She beckoned him to follow her. What do you want? There was no reply. Truly terrified, he descended down the stairs, not knowing what he would encounter. Tobias, Tobias. Snout, where are you, you great lump? Come here, boy. That's it. Stay with me. There was no sign of the apparition, but then a cold blast of air came from behind. As he stood up to turn to look, there was the most terrifying sight to behold. He wanted to run and hide, but something inside him compelled him to stay. 
Tobias, I ask thee not to forsake me, but I need thy help. Tobias was stunned. What? Me? How? Go to the well to make me whole, and bring me my head. It's dark out here. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Well, I am actually. Look after me, Snout. Let's have a look in this well. Oh, I can see some. Oh, I mean, oh, thank you, Snout. What's that out there? Oh, oh that's got to be the head. It feels heavy. Come on, let's get out of here quick. Dost thou have my head? Tobias threw the wet, damp cloth to the floor. There it is, what's left of it. I be most grateful. May ye and your wife have a long and peaceful life. Blessed be. And like a wisp, she was gone. Happy Halloween from Tobias. That's me off to bed.